Hello, welcome once again to another edition of the Coach's Corner program. I'm Jeff Ruth, along with me is uh, uh, he, he said he was the 15th choice, actually, he was the fourth <laughs> choice today, Or Kerry, and uh, uh, your teacher, assistant athletic director, which right. I wasn't aware of, you're the PA announcer, uh, you've coached a number of different sports here That's right. at, at Harding, so uh, m Mr. Versatility, I uh, guess. Mr. Volunteer, yeah. voluntold, I suppose, probably more than anything. Yeah. Uh, always you've been a Harding kid my whole life, and... Uh, graduated from here, was on this show 20-some-odd years oh, ago were you? when I was the senior here playing football with Coach Hinton. That would have been the first or second year we yeah, started the that's coaching right, show. that's right. And um, coached football, was the head baseball coach here for a number of years, um, and the head, co head softball coach now, and just try to be as active in the school and in the community as much as I can. It's just uh, it's real rewarding working well, with young people. Well, and of course, anybody also in the Harding Hall of Fame committee as well. And of course, anybody that goes to the Harding football games on Friday nights will recognize your voice. Now, last Friday against Highland, I sat down, I started looking at the numbers for mm -hmm. Harding. It's like, there's no way anybody's going to be able to pick up oh, these numbers. Were, you did a terrific <laughs> job. <laughs> Thanks. We, we, uh, you know, some the, the kids wore the camouflage jerseys as a result of the National Guard, and um, they they did a great job sponsoring for us. And so our kids were were decked out in some good-looking camouflage jerseys. And you're right, they were difficult. The camo with the black numbers, but I was lucky enough to have been around enough to know kind of who plays what positions mm -hmm. and who tends to make the most tackles. And we had binoculars down there and couple of spotters so it's always tough when the, especially you know you get into those tough fonts and weird colors mm -hmm, yeah. it can be tough to pick out the numbers but we got lucky this week yeah and most people have never had a chance to watch a game in the press box mm -hmm. there's a lot that goes on in the press box there absolutely is it's uh it's enjoyable you get a lot of fun banter back and forth but there's but it's serious too you know as we I, as a pa guy sit next to the clock operator and so the clock operator is constantly watching the officials to make sure that the clock is operating when it should. And you're always trying to keep the scoreboard operator up and down on how many yards to go and, and where we are. And you've got spotters hollering out who's making tackles and things like that. So there's a lot of activity. It's not just people sitting up there and watching. They're, they're working. And it was a, I mean, Harding played well they last did. week. They did. They got beat by a good Highland ball. They did. But Harding had a lot of positives last week. They, they absolutely did. They, uh, they looked as sharp as I think they have all year against uh, what I think is probably the best team that they've played all year and will prove to be one of the best teams that they'll play out of all 10 games. Um, I thought Alex Stokes looked really good throwing the ball. He seemed to have a lot of zip on it. Um, he threw the ball with confidence, and I think as a result, uh, some of those passes were, were right on the money, and, and it paid off for them. Uh, Lem Reynolds ran the ball exceptionally well early. I think what they ran into, uh, Nauman, number 42 mm -hmm. for them, is just a, a bell cow of a back, and he's just a big old boy. And, and you, you can tackle him the first half, but come the second half, yep. it gets tiring tackling him over and over, and he kind of showed his, his strength in the second half. But right. the boys played as well as, as they have probably all year. Yeah, I would agree. We'll come back. We'll take a look at some of the highlights from the Highland Contest last Friday night. We'll do that right after these words. Whoa, slow down there, Hot Rod. We know you're in a hurry to get to the historic OK Cafe located at 734 East Center Street, Marion, Ohio. And we know you can't wait to enjoy the great food and beverages of one of the most popular restaurants in town, known for their famous handmade pizzas, subs, calzones, and more. And we know you can't wait to meet up with good friends for the best in live local entertainment, big screen sports action, bike nights with weekly contests and prizes. But what's the hurry? We're open daily from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Monday through Thursday, and 11 a.m. to 2.30 a.m. Fridays and Saturdays, offering dine-in, carry-out, and delivery. Oh well, some people just can't wait to get to the OK Cafe. Back once again on the Coach's Corner program and talking with uh, Coach McCreary and Coach, you know, Harding's still looking for that first win. Mm -hmm. You've been around long enough to know uh, 
you know, after four or five, six games, things can begin to go south on you in a hurry. But hopefully with the performance last week, even though they didn't get the win, there were still a lot of positives. And hopefully you know, the team can build on that in practice this week and the next couple of weeks. Yeah, there's no question. When, when, uh, when you're struggling to find success, you have to celebrate small successes make uh, goals that are attainable, and I think Coach Hart and his staff have, have done a great job of that, making sure that, that uh, you know, you get a three and out, celebrate that, right? If, it, if, if on defense if you're struggling because they're coming, uh, you know, at you, you get a three and out, let's celebrate that. Maybe, maybe the scoreboard isn't where we need it to be, but if we, if we set small attainable goals, uh, you put your kids in a, in a situation where they can accentuate the positive and I think that's what's real important and I'm sure Coach Arndt's doing a good job with that um, and, and one other thing too you can lose kids real quick in an, in an 0 for season mm -hmm. and so uh, when I watched what I watched last week you could have team, seen a team come out against the league, league leader and just roll over right from the beginning and they didn't they fought and, and had a lead at halftime and, and were really playing really really well um, so I think that speaks volumes not only for the kids, right, but also for that coaching staff to keep those kids invested. Yeah, I would agree. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the highlights from the contest last week against Thailand. So here it seems we're going to be looking at a big defensive stop for the Prexies. So you see Highland throws the screen here, and Landon Adams, number 51, was all over the field. He played really well. He last really week. did play well. <clears throat> this is a play to Lem Reynolds. Just going to go off tackle, and Lem just kind of takes it the rest of the way. Highland was playing close to the line of scrimmage. It split the safeties, and, and Lem just uh, took it out the house, which was a, a great sign for him because he's been battling injuries. His dad did that a couple times. Just here, a couple times. Yeah. I was lucky enough to graduate with <laughs> Lem. He's a good, good guy, great teacher in our district. Here's another big stop. This one, uh, Juan Ruiz made a great play on fourth down. It was fourth and short, and Juan made a great play. Here's Lem again with another nice run. He, ran, he runs the ball hard. And he's always falling forward. Uh, you know, that, that shows that he's running with great pad level. It's another offensive play for the Prexies. They've emptied the, the backfield. I'm going to shoot the ball over here to, uh, I believe that's Marion Ross. And uh, Marion is going to, no, that's Matt Thomas. I apologize. That's Matt Thomas. He ran about 80 yards to get 15. He sure did. But, but I, what I like the best about that is he put his head down at the end instead of just trotting out of bounds. This is a big play in this game. The Prexies are up against the clock a little bit, the play clock, and Matt Thomas is able to uh, work hard. <clears throat> oh, I apologize. That's, uh, yeah, now we go. This is, this is the big play. You'll see the clock up there is a minute and 14. Matt Thomas just out-muscles the yeah, corner. He out-wanted it. He, do he did. That's a tremendous athlete. That looked a lot like you know, rebounding on a basketball court. When you decide you want it, you just go get it. Yeah. And that basically tied the game. And now you're thinking, okay, if Harding can just hold him here and go into the yep. locker room tie, yep. it'd be a plus. And, of course, they come up with a huge turnover. They sure do right there. <clears throat> and that was uh, Hemp Hill, Marcus Hemp Hill on the sack there as a strip sack. Prexies recover, and it changes things immensely, especially after this next play. This is Matthew Thomas again going to take the ball down inside the 15. And we're thinking, okay, did you get up, spike it, you get a couple of they, – they took their time. They did. And uh, great to see the sophomore, Layden Jones, go up and catch the ball here just as, as time expires. He, he's 6'6", and he needed all of it. He did, you're right. The crowd was electric uh, as time expired. It, it was as loud as we've heard it in a long time after that touchdown. 
It's going to be a good looking kickoff return. Again, you can see those of you at home, you can see how dark those numbers are. It was a challenge. Mm -hmm. tough. Here you'll see Alex let another one go down the field. And this is a touchdown <clears throat> as well. Actually, I had to kind of slow up a little bit to, to catch did. that. Nick Hecker, I believe, was the mm -hmm. guy that caught that touchdown pass. And he's done a great job for a guy who hadn't played much football here. He's been a baseball guy, a basketball guy, but uh, they talked him into coming out and playing tight end for prep season. He's, he's shown uh, himself to be a great attribute to the team. Yeah, and basically, as you said, it came down to number 42. You had about, you know, the first half, you had about 50 yards, and the second half, you had about 300 yards. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm guessing the, the folks that are watching this program are probably watching the ball game, too. On, and, uh, boy, he, he really showed how tough he was at the end of that ball game with those three or four big runs. Yeah, but again, Hardy had their opportunities. They did. They absolutely did. And really, when a team's struggling and, and maybe a little outmatched or uh, outmuscled, that's all you can ask is to get a chance. And they had it. Okay. We'll come back with more on the Coach's Corner program right after these words. The historic OK Cafe. Pizza, calzones, subs, sandwiches, and more. Our fresh dough is made daily. Topped with your favorite ingredients and made to order. Stop in for our lunch buffet or check out our many daily specials. Looking for something to do? Come in and check out our giant projector screen on game days. Sing with friends on karaoke nights and dance the night away with live entertainment from your favorite local bands. So even though Rex might have a short reach, we'll never come up short on service. So remember, when you're hungry, check out the OK Cafe, home of the giant 20-inch Pizzasaurus Rex made to order. Dine in, carry out, or delivery. Come to the historic OK Cafe, located at 734 East Center Street, Marion made for over 80 years. Back once again on the Coach's Corner program, and uh, with me now is Carter Jones, and Carter's Telecom 2 student. Yeah. So now you're on this side of the camera as opposed to being on the other side of the camera. Yeah, it feels a little weird. <laughs> now, uh, Telecom 2, it's actually offered for two years. Mm -hmm. There's Telecom 1, yeah. duh, and then Telecom 2. What's kind of the difference between 1 and 2? So Telecom 1 is kind of just an intro and in getting started with Telecom 2. So when you take Telecom 1, it's more of learning the news and learning all of the programs that go into like learning the material and stuff. And Telecom 2 is more hands-on and doing your own thing and taking what you've learned in Telecom 1 and turning it into something of your own and really you can reach out and create different things that you already know from Telecom One. Is this something you've always had an interest in? Yeah, if you have any interest in filming, photography, editing, anything, you can take Telecom One and Two and get some really good experience and maybe take it to college and take it into the real world for a yeah. career. Yeah. yeah, I know COVID kind of slowed the class down like it did a lot of things um, and you weren't able to maybe get out the last year or so and do a lot of filming of the Christmas pageants and that kind of thing, but this year's kind of opened back up a little bit. Yeah, this year is really open. We've got basketball games, football games, um, really anything. It opens a lot more opportunities to get out and filming and get your hands on um, the material. Now, what's a typical Friday night to like for you up in the press box? Uh, you go up there, um, you run a camera, you can run a switcher, um, so you can do all types of things, learn on how to move the cameras, different camera movements, different, just how to run it overall and how to switch back and forth of clips and then later it gets edited and everything is really smooth so you just get to be behind the camera of what you usually see on on the football games, yeah. Now you're a senior, do you know at this point what you want to kind of go into 
I do. I, I have thought about going in for film, for editing and stuff like that. And I took actually another film class that kind of connected to this class. So this class, before I went into um, film studies, it kind of helped me do the editing process. And then I can take what I learned in um, film studies and take it here. And it's just, it makes everything much smoother with editing and stuff. So yeah, it helps a lot. You know, I remember, and again, we're going way back, but I remember taking some classes in school with, it's like, you know, I didn't really see much impact of how that's going to make me a better person. But obviously a class like this can go a long way in determining what you're going to major in and what you want to do 10, 20, 30 years down the road. Yeah, and, and most of the stuff that you're going to do in college is a lot of the stuff that you do in here. And it's just, it, it's a great opportunity to learn yeah. the stuff really early, yeah. And not a lot of schools offer the kind of program that they do here at Harding. No, I mean, I've heard of a few schools, but we have a lot of equipment here that you can just get started immediately. So, yeah. right. Do you know where you're going to go to school? Um, not exactly right now, um, but I've been thinking about Ohio State maybe, but applying for colleges, so yeah. Okay, well, you've done a nice job so far. Looking forward to working with you throughout the rest of the mm -hmm. season. Carter, thanks yep. very much. Yep. Nice job. We'll be back to wrap up this edition of the Coach's Corner program right after these words. Welcome to Harding Telecom Digital Media. Unlike television, print, and radio media, which are all one-way communications, digital media creates an interconnected world of interactive communications that puts you in control of content creation and broadcasting. As a member of Harding Telecom, we have three ways of building your digital media skills. As an underclassman, you can take our semester-long class, Intro to Video Editing, where you'll be introduced to the latest hardware and software in digital media. Learn to create your own content with overlays, special effects, and audio processors. Your content will only be limited by your imagination. Telecom One is a year-long class that introduces you to the world of audio-video broadcast communications. Here you will learn how to operate video hardware and software, design sets, direct and produce events and expand your editing capabilities broadcasting online and over our public access television channel. You will learn to produce daily news announcements and share your creations throughout our cable television and social media networks. Finally, Telecom 2 is our year-long class available for upperclassmen who have completed the prerequisite Telecom 1 class. Here you will produce and direct your own broadcast events. You will be put in charge of productions and lead other students through the introductory processes of media production. Many of our telecom graduates have gone on to study broadcast media in college and launch careers as television news and weather personalities, Emmy-winning editors for nationally syndicated television shows, and audio production engineers. So don't hesitate to schedule Harding Telecom Digital Media. Talk to your guidance counselor or see Mr. Mullins in room 201. Once again, back on the Coach's Corner program, and Coach, uh, you know, we'll talk a little bit uh, about some of the other sports mm -hmm. because, as I said, your assistant uh, uh, athletic director to Sean Kearns. I know Sean's away today at yeah. a tennis tournament. Uh, what are some of the, the fall sports that we should be aware of? And now, I mean, we're at the end of September, 1st we of October. Are. A lot of the sports are winding down. They are. And and I think you mentioned tennis. Actually, uh, Sean is today running the uh, tennis doubles tournament over in Lexington. Um, our tennis team has played exceptionally well. Um, I think uh, for all intents and purposes, uh, Shelby has uh, got this, the league pretty well route, uh, wrapped up. But <clears throat> Harding has won all the other ones. They've dropped mm -hmm. two to Shelby. and. And Coach Pitts, Blaine Pitts, who's been around here for a very, very long time. He's been around here longer than you. I he think. has been. He's a, but you know what? He's probably the best coach we have in our program. And when I say that, I mean across, that, across the board. And that is no disrespect to any of our other coaches. He's just that good. He's done a fantastic job with our, with our young people, especially our tennis kids, uh, our, the girls' teams, which he's had over the years. And, and uh, for a city school... Uh, playing what we call, like to call sometimes the country club sports, uh, for him to have the success and our girls to have the success that has been really, really impressive. Taryn Simmers has put herself in this position to be the one seed going into the singles tournament on Saturday, and, and so we look for her to bring home the crown. That'd be great. Uh, cross country is doing really, really well. 
Um, cross Country will uh, have their big meet, which is our largest event that we put on here at the high school. It's a massive event. We'll have uh, a whole bunch of schools coming in on the 8th of October to take part in our Cross Country meet, so that's a big one. Um, the boys and girls soccer teams are, uh, are playing, playing hard. Um, the girls team especially uh, is, is a better team this year than they've been in the past. They've got a lot of an infusion of, of young talent, which has been fun to watch. And they've got great senior leadership, which has been good also. So um, the volleyball team, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Coach Davis, who's a fantastic lady who is uh, running our volleyball program for the first time. This is her first year with the volleyball team. And she's doing a fantastic job. They play tonight. They've got RV out here tonight. They beat Mansfield senior in straight uh, games yesterday, which was a nice win for them. And so those kids all give a lot of their time and effort and energy. And then, of course, the football team. It gets a lot of attemp attention uh, throughout the community, as uh, and it's well-deserved. But, um, but our other sports, of course, um, are working hard and, and uh, deserve some recognition, and, too. And don't forget Jacob uh, Beasley with yeah, the golf. Hole in one. How about yeah. that? I'm so glad you mentioned that. Here I'm talking about not forgetting, and I forgot the golf team. Coach Godfrey is a fantastic man as well. Does a great job leading those guys. Jacob Beachler was the medalist in the MOAC golf tournament and uh, finished the round with a hole in one. He set a number of records here at the high school, including the low round and Jacob's a fantastic young man, uh, is, is one of the highest ranked kids in his class. He's, he's a junior and uh, has really done a, a fantastic job. Things are definitely on the upswing. They are, for sure. Yeah. They are. Hey, nice job. All right. Appreciate you. You, appreciate you coming yeah, up. Okay, I'm glad I could fill in last minute here. All right, thanks very much, Coach McCurry. Take care. It's going to wrap it up for this edition of the Coach's Corner program. Tune in again next week. I'm Jeff Ruth.